Starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you join us today for our webinar featuring a workforce development story from uh, our BC Ideas Exchange Success Story Collection. My name is Susan Lowe. I'm with the Design Coordination and Outreach Branch of the Ministry of Jobs, Trade and Technology. I'm providing technical support for today's session and moderating our Q&A session after the stories. I'm located in Victoria, BC on the unceded Coast Salish territory of the Lekwungen and Lekwungen nations. Before we get started, I just want to let you know there's two ways to connect to the webinar for audio. If you have a headset or a microphone and speakers on your computer, you can choose computer audio, which is the default option. Uh, if you're concerned about bandwidth or you don't have computer audio or it seems to be malfunctioning, you can select phone call instead and dial-in information will be displayed. Make sure when you log into the phone system that you use the PIN number, which is unique to you, and that lets me mute or unmute your line if you want to speak later on in the webinar. A uh, couple things about our control panel. The orange arrow will hide or unhide the control panel, and it hides itself automatically if you're not using it, so don't panic. We're not gone. You can go full screen with the blue square. The raise hands button lets me know that you want to talk or ask a question during the Q&A portions of the webinar. However, it is actually uh, easier uh, if you have a question to just enter it into the enter a question staff field and uh, that will get my attention and um, I can read out your question or answer it directly in typing. Uh, we will have some polls on today's webinar to keep you engaged. Uh, so you'll need to put down your sandwich and engage. I'm going to run the first one here just as a test so you can see what it looks like. Uh, here I go. I'm going to launch it. Question is, what kind of organization do you work for? So take a couple of minutes here to give us a little bit of info about where you're at, what kind of organization you're with. I usually leave these up for about... 30 seconds, 45 seconds, depending upon how much voter turnout we get. Uh, so I can see as people answer, how many people have answered. We're at about 67 voter turnout right now, which is not too bad, but average for the price of the province of BC. I think we can do better. As we as it, we see a rise, we're now at 78%. We're now in a very civically engaged population for the webinar. Uh, that's fabulous. I'll leave it open for another couple of seconds and then I'm going to close it, and here we go, three, two, one, close it, and I'll show you the results of it. You can see that 57% of the people on today's webinar are from local governments, municipal or regional. 43% uh, are with the provincial government or magical other. And we only get five choices, so I uh, have to combine some of those. So carrying on. Uh, today's webinar is about workforce development. So to, by the end of your webinar today, your webinar experience, you will be able to uh, describe how workforce development fits into a community effect of strategy uh, you'll have heard about and be able to relate a BC-based community-driven example of workforce development. And you will have uh, some ideas of actions that communities can take to advance workforce development in their local economy. After the story showcase and after Davin's presentation, I'm going to open things up for a bit of a peer-to-peer -peer discussion. So feel free to share an example of workforce development in your area or ask a question of uh, the other people in the webinar who are also involved in the active field. So the audience is the expert here. Uh, I'm going to ask one more poll question before we get started. What I'd like to know is how important is workforce development to your community's economic development plans. I'm going to launch this. This is a very basic rating scale. How important is workforce development for your community? There are only four choices you are going to have to do when you can't go middle. Different kinds of economists will, will feel either happy or sad about the fact that I haven't provided you with a middle option. So the poll is complete. We have 100% voter turnout, everyone. That is incredible. Oh, someone's changing their vote. Someone's changing their vote here. 
We've got 90% voter turnout. Someone is thinking about it a little bit more. We had 100% voter turnout, but I guess someone joined the webinar. They haven't voted quite yet, um, but we've been up for 45 seconds here, and this is speed polling time. So I'm going to close this and share the results. So for 78% of our communities taking part in today's call, workforce development is extremely important, which is probably why you're on today's webinar. For 11%, it's quite important. Uh, and another 11% moderately important. And this is a good thing. So it shows you are on the right webinar. All right, carrying on. Our first presentation today will be uh, with Kevin Poole and Richard Toperser, who are coming to us live from Vernon within the Okanagan Indian Band's traditional territory. Um, Kevin and Richard are uh, collaborators on the Vernon and Area Workforce Development Roundtable. I'm not gonna give an introduction for them because they can do it far better for themselves. Uh, they can tell you about themselves and what their initiative is doing. I'm gonna change the presenter controls over to Kevin here and let him control his presentation and control your screens. There we go. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Kevin Poole, Manager of Economic Development and Tourism. I have the tourism portfolio as well for the City of Vernon. And good morning, everybody. Or I guess it's technically seven minutes afternoon. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Richard Topperser. I'm a Regional Manager of Rural Development based here in Vernon. Yes, and we are in the traditional territory of the SEIC, uh Nation. So uh, thank you for having us this morning. Uh, so why are we here? Why is workforce development um, an issue? Well, Kevin, do you want to talk maybe a little bit about some of the data that you've been receiving through business walks and, and visits with uh, companies and such? Yeah, so we're, we're part, uh, I'm sure many of you are part of the BC Business Counts program through the BC Economic Development Association. Uh, I think we're one of the second regions to do business walks, but before that, We've done sort of comprehensive uh, business retention and expansion visits within the community. And, and one of the key challenges that came up early on, even back in 2010 when we started, was the labor shortage. And at, at that point, it was probably more of a looming labor shortage. So it's been identified very early on by our businesses. Perfect. So 2014 was actually the first year that more people left the workforce than joined. So this is not an issue that's going to go away. That trend continues. Uh, and it is the number one challenge for business, attraction, retention of labor, regardless of the sector. And there's really only two ways that we've recognized to get labor. So you either build it from within your community or you go outside of your community and attract it. Um, and then I guess the premise that we've been operating under as we've developed this workforce development roundtable is simply as individuals, we transition uh, through multiple uh, phases of our life. So we go through primary school and we transition into secondary. We then transition from secondary into post-secondary or maybe even the workforce. And then we'll probably transition between those two for the rest of our lives. What we've found is that the uh, employers and the institutions themselves do a great job of what they do and where we tend to lose people is during the transition. So what we devised was a workforce development roundtable. And really what that was is a way for the private sector and the public sector to come together, develop relationships, and manage those transitions. So maybe, Kevin, we've got quite a, quite a group at this roundtable, and we're always looking for more space for <laughs> meeting room space. <laughs> It has definitely gotten bigger since uh, Richard thought of the concept. We, we've got a great working group here. We call it Vision North Okanagan. So it's the staff at a variety of different agencies that are on the business support services. We meet on a monthly basis and, and this concept came forward and, and evolved into a lot of the service providers meeting going, how, how do we meet the needs of business? We're identifying this gap. You know, I think one thing we should note, if, if we look at the, the census data in the Vernon area, and I don't know if others have experienced the same thing, but if you if you take the breakdown of, of the uh, the new population and, and the demographics that we saw from, say, 01 up to 06 during some big boom years in this community, we saw a lot of younger people coming to the area. And then when we see the change into the 011 and, and 
in 2011 to 2016 census, we saw still very strong growth, but from an older demographic. So that's creating a challenge for some of our employers. So the fantastic part is when Richard said, I'm gonna put this workforce roundtable together and, and we'll see who we can reach out to. We, we reached out to a variety of our, uh, our private companies in the community. And what I was amazed at is um, how many of them went, yes, this is a big issue for for us. So you can see just by that slide some of our larger larger corporates that we have in the community and from across sectors, right? So it didn't matter if it was manufacturing, if it was tourism, if it was technology, um, really all of them were experiencing similar challenges and, and issues. So we continue to add to this every time we talk to employers in town and they talk about the challenges that they're having trying to get skilled labor or even entry level labor. Um, they want to come sit at this table as well and, and express their and share their challenges. Yeah, and that's typically the challenge is the the, the engagement with the private sector, but the, the, it certainly hasn't been much of a challenge at all. Um, <clears throat> so where have we been? So in in the first couple of roundtable conversations, we clearly identified four opportunities, uh, and I won't go into a lot of detail. We do have. Um, a, a Vernon and Area Workforce Development Report, which we're happy to share, and it does go into a lot more detail around these four elements, but also some strategies that we've employed to uh, action these four elements. So, so the first was the relationships. So we found very early in the conversation that the private sector and the public sector didn't have the most robust of relationships. So tremendous amount of opportunity there to help build those relationships and again we have a whole bunch of activities which i won't go into that we've used to help uh, kindle those relationships we also found that the narrative in the community was quite interesting so the narrative for a long time has been you can't do that here you can't have that great career you can't have that great job here in this in this area and nothing could be farther from the truth we have, as you saw from the previous slide, an amazing assortment of companies that all have an amazing assortment of career opportunities. It's just we're not talking about it. And so one of the goals is for us to start talking about it, start sharing who is in town, what opportunities they have, and change that narrative about you can have a good career here. Exposure fits in well with the narrative. So if we do have of these amazing employers, how do we expose people to those opportunities that those employers have? Whether that's school kids, whether that's high school kids, whether that's kids in the local university or the college, whether that's underemployed uh, people that are looking to, to bolster their skill sets, how do we expose, and expose them to those opportunities and create those relationships? And then lastly, it's about aligning the training with the opportunities that we have. So we really look to the employers to articulate their skills needs. And then we look to, uh, through this conversation, align our local training capacity with those skills needs. And that's the importance of having the, the UBCOs, Okanagan College, and now I think that's a big engagement that we got is, is school districts, uh, both school districts, 22, and also in, in the Armstrong area, 83 at the table to, to be part of those conversations to to shape our children at a very early age. That's right. So I, I mentioned at the beginning, there's two ways to get labor. You can build it from within or you can go outside. So let's talk a little bit about building it from within. Um, Kevin, do you want to touch on the, the job fair a little bit? Yeah, so we've just, uh, we work with a group called Nexus. Um, that is one of our employment agencies here in town. And they came up with the concept of, of having a centralized job fair. Um, right now, a lot of our employers were, will work. We're very fortunate here. Our work BC program is delivered through our community futures office. So we've, we've probably got one of the strongest and the largest community futures offices in, in, in Canada. I think it is the largest in BC. So it's a fantastic organization and great to work with. But Nexus, a separate agency, said let's let's do a larger set of just one-off uh, employment opportunities or, or companies coming in to pitch. Maybe we do a job fair. So that has grown and I think we're year three this year that we did just back in April. There was over 40 employers that attended and we had about 680 attendees come out to the event. So it's fantastic in just three years. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so some of the uh, things that we've accomplished on the building from within focus is uh, I, I've got to give kudos to the school district. So through the roundtable conversation, they've shown 
great leadership, they've actually created a brand new position in the school district that they didn't have before. Uh, it's a district's principal of career education, and that role is to be the liaison with the private sector so that we can help the kids understand opportunities. And that, that's really uh, led to a whole host of activities like um, kids going out to employers' places of work and doing facility tours, employers coming into schools. Uh, we've seen mentorships and career panels, um, work experience, job shadowing, internships, co-ops. And uh, one of the things we're working on right now is a tech meetup. Some communities have that where they put the spotlight on the tech sector and they have the kids play with all the different toys that the local tech companies uh, create and discover. Um, and then the job fairs, obviously, uh, that Kevin mentioned. Uh, another example of what we've accomplished is WorkBC, to their credit, has changed the way they do business. So they're doing things like on-site job fairs for employers. So their clientele are coming and going, and they have employers set up right there in the building that their clientele can meet with on the spot. Uh, they also have focus groups, and they're creating uh, sector opportunities focusing on positions. So, for example, uh, nonprofit caregivers. Uh, not a lot of those to choose from, so working with their clientele and finding a good fit for that type of role, and then, of course, the, the organizations that need those roles. Okanagan College. Um, I talked about aligning the training with the skills needs. So they've done a great job of identifying the skills gaps. You know, one of the, and of course with the dual credits, um, a lot of, lot more dual credits uh, coming with the, with the high schools. Uh, but one example that we've seen that's really overwhelming is, uh, so there was a need for insulators as part of the construction. And they have created an insulator certificate. And not only is there a high demand here in the Okanagan and the Vernon area for that, because it's a very unique course, but we've got companies from Ontario phoning the college saying, we'll take your graduating class, we'll fly them out here and pay their relocation expenses. So not exactly our goal. No, not exactly <laughs> our goal, but it speaks to the demand for sure. The college has actually been, been fantastic. I know uh, many from a municipal level are, are struggling and, and implementing bylaws and how they're going to deal with the cannabis industry. And I know from a... Uh, um, from a licensed producer aspect, we did approach the college and, and uh, just name the ones that I know in the in the region in the North Okanagan that are going through the process to get their Health Canada approvals. And I was amazed on how many there were. And, and I think Okanagan College is like a little, little behind Kwantlen College has really stepped up fast. But the Okanagan College is looking at the same thing of how they can help on the training aspect all the way from the grow, uh, the science and research side, which we're really interested in, all the way to the retail aspect. So. Uh, it's great to have a, a college that jumps on board as fast as it can. Yeah, very nimble. Uh, and then a couple last things just on the uh, internal focus. So we've seen a lot of development of intercompany relationships. So again, with a roster of 40 companies sitting at the table, it's a lot of opportunity for them to get to know each other. We've seen some labor sharing because of that, you know, a summer, winter seasonal labor sharing, you know, Silver Star, uh, Predator Ridge as an example, uh, doing some labor sharing. And then our Indigenous community partners, uh, we have two Indigenous communities that sit at the table, and we've really seen um, some great strides in those communities, uh, developing relationships with employers as well, and working on uh, training initiatives and working on employment initiatives. So that leads us to the next focal point, uh, which is about attracting people from outside the community. And, and there were some foundational elements that needed to happen for this to be able to occur and maybe I'll let Kevin talk a little bit about those. Yeah, we, we've got a ways to go. I think uh, when I look at the work that Powell River's done and, and a lot of communities that have done the resident attraction side or specific segments, I know Cornell's done a great job on the physician recruitment and there's others throughout the province that have some great examples of, of what they've done. Uh, I look to Penticton on their Start Here Okanagan uh, initiative that we're going to chat with more about what Central Okanagan 
we've done. There's a lot of communities that are really in this people attraction and, and, and professional attraction to the community. So we just launched a, a new website within the city site, but a moving to Vernon website in January in a real partnership with our, uh, our social planning council who's taking advantage of the, the LIPS program, the local immigration partnership. And, and before that, the Welcome BC program that we've participated in as well. So we've got a great relationship there and it's allowed us to to, to utilize some funding and meet a need that the employers have said, you know, all those 40 employers at the table said it's one thing for them to reach out and try to attract skilled labor, but they need a community portal to highlight the, the breadth of job opportunities within the region. I think a big one, actually, we had our Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting today, and we had Accelerate Okanagan come out and, and recognize that even then, especially on the tech front, we need to spread our uh, our uh, reach a little further to ensure that we're including Kelowna in, in our uh, job opportunities as, as we move forward to make sure that people coming to Vernon, Kelowna, it's 45 minutes between the two communities, and the more jobs we can show and highlight, the more career paths is, is going to lead to some great opportunities. Absolutely, and and it also speaks to the uh, the hidden professional work that you're doing. Yeah, maybe we'll move to the uh, the next one. So we're we're still new when they attract from the outside, but it's definitely something that we we see a lot of partnerships with our, our private sector employers, and and they're truly supportive. And yes, that is that's Cal Lake, it's not the Caribbean. So we're very fortunate to live here. So we think we should just be able to put that picture up, and people will move. But so far, it's, it's close. Um, We've got another roundtable coming up in, in July, uh, so shortly. We've got a great couple of good uh, concepts in the agenda. Richard can speak to the PNP and the International Trade uh, Pilot Opportunity, but one that we're working on right now, we're just launching a survey. Hopefully we'll get out this week or early next week is, is we're trying to locate our hidden professionals. So those are the ones that are working in your community out of their home or basically the untraditional office space. So they're either, they're, uh, the remote workers or their professionals that are exporting a service so they just simply choose to live in your community so we're trying to get one a bit of an economic indicator of what they're providing because essentially they're all little mini manufacturing companies or, or many uh, exporters as they're uh, exporting in a trade or a skill set and in part two we're trying to find out what do they need how can we help from a municipal standpoint and trying to uh, to support their needs as, as they hopefully grow and, and do they need incubation services? Do they want to work with other people instead, you know, the social isolation that you may face in your home? So there's a lot of opportunities there. And I think the employers recognize that too. There's also a skill set that they may be able to breach out of that home office that's working remotely right into their company, into a corporate like a Keltire or a Tolco that we have here. Like a supply chain opportunity. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, so on, on uh, in our July roundtable, we are focusing uh, about going outwards. We partnered, as, as Kevin mentioned, with the Local Immigration Partnership. Um, it makes a lot of sense to do that. And when we talk about going outside of the community, it could be as close as Kelowna. It could be as far as Indonesia. I think the, the conversation at the roundtable will determine what that looks like. But it's really about putting the spotlight on Vernon, telling folks what we have insofar as career opportunities, what kind of skills we need and being able to clearly articulate that and, and do it in a coordinated manner. And one of the ways that we've been exploring, and again, this is early days of how to do that, that is through our provincial nominee program and through our inter international trade uh, in market folks. So we've, as most people know and, and have worked with them in the past, we've got people uh, in, in Europe, in the States, in China and in Indonesia, all over the world that represent British Columbia. Uh, so we're working with those two organizations to see, are we able to funnel? If we can ar articulate the skills needs for the employers in the community, can we use and access those international trade in market folks to funnel people into the PNP program? And then we can use our local immigration partnership to land them here in the community and welcome to the community and, and, and get them settled. So. Um, just something that we're working on, and I think the conversation, we're really looking forward to seeing where, where it goes and, yeah. and, and what shining the spotlight on Vernon might look like insofar as skills attraction. So that was a quick skate over the pond of what we're doing, <laughs> maybe not so quick. Uh, as always, we're happy to discuss, and you can reach out to, to either of us anytime or ask questions if we have time here today. So over to you, Susan. Thank you for giving Great. us this opportunity.
Thanks, you guys. That was a really engaging presentation. I love the uh, the bird's eye view we have on you guys. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the glare? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, th this is amateur. Uh, this is this is not uh, professional. This is not CTV. Not Hollywood. This is not the news hour. <laughs> this is uh, this is ECDEV in practice. Uh, so thank you very much, you guys, for for sharing that. Um, I want to give an opportunity for people who are watching the webinar, if they have any questions, to uh, either put a question into the uh, question field or raise your hand, and I'll I'll try and spot you in my list of attendees here for anyone who wants to ask a question about uh, the Vernon and Area Workforce Development Roundtable. A uh, bit of a cheeky question for you. Uh, how often do you have to repeat all of those syllables and have you considered branding? Ah. <laughs> that one's directed at Richard. Is. Yeah. <laughs> are, are we talking about my ministry name or are we talking about the round table name? <laughs> the round table name. Let's leave the ministry name out of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause we could go either way on that one. So, uh, yeah, no, we, we haven't gotten to the branding <laughs> portion of the agenda no. yet. I, I think that's more just an internal piece. Um, you know, it, it's right now we're focused on the external marketing of the community and, and the opportunities in it. But thanks for the question. <laughs> Great, thank you. And while I threw you that complete puffball question, uh, thankfully one of our attendees has actually asked a real question, uh, and that is, <laughs> Uh, how often does the roundtable meet, and can you speak a bit more about how you help foster relationships between the public and private sector? Sure. So um, we've been meeting, I, I think the conversation started about two years ago, and we've been meeting about three times a year on average. We don't... Uh, we don't meet too often because we really focus the roundtable conversations on guidance for us in the private sector on what we need to do in the interim between meetings. And we want to be able to, you know, not waste people's time uh, and, and demonstrate uh, some things that, um, that we've done to, to, to move, move along. Well, we've got opportunities that we've utilized for little sub-meetings, right? Even on the website, I know when we just uh, drafted a bunch of material uh, we just pulled in a focus group of some of our major employers and said, what, what do you think? You know, what are your thoughts on uh, changes we need to make? So they've given us a whole host of ideas. They want us to incorporate more imagery, more videos, maybe company profiles, all of the great suggestions, right? They have fantastic mm -hmm. information for us that we can do outside the round table. And then, as I mentioned, we've got this Vision North Okanagan group. So if there's items that come up that's more specific to where the service providers can uh, to work together to uh, to assist with an issue, then we've got that table that we, we meet monthly at that table that we can discuss those concepts. Right. So, you know, the, I'd say the, the relationships are developed firstly at the table of just getting to know everyone, uh, but all, and it, it is a true round table. So it's not a talking head, it's, it's a conversation within the room amongst all. Uh, and I would say the relationships are further kindled by the different organizations doing different things. So I talked a little bit about the college. They've asked some of the employers, as an example, to be on an advisory group to help advise uh, their, their skills training agenda. Um, we've seen Work BC uh, ask employers or offer to employers, you know, we'll, we'll have an on-site uh, job fair for you as an employer and, and worked on relationships there. So what what can we do to help and how can we help you? Same with the high school. Uh, we've seen a lot of employers coming into the high school and talking to the kids and kids getting bussed out and employers are actually paying for the buses for the kids to go out and, and visit uh, their place of work. An example of that, so that it is all just relationships. And often in economic development, that's what it is, right? You're a connection point to others, right? To say, if you need a contact here, then here's a here's a connection you two need to connect, right? And and in this one, that's what the round table's allowed. I think of Kingfisher and, and their HR, uh, am I going to Sarah, Sarah, yeah. Sarah, okay, I got it right. So anyway, Sarah at, at Kingfisher Boats, so they, they manufacture boats, aluminum, Welding is what they do, and they have a high need for aluminum welders, which is a real specialty trade that they often train on site uh, for the welders that come through the program. Uh, 
Um, they're huge in the apprenticeship, apprenticeship side, and the school district has their own apprenticeship committee. They do trade samplers with the college. They got, they got an excellent resource. They brought two buses full of kids out it, within a very quick, Sarah said, I will pay for the buses and bring kids out. And within a week, school district had two buses on the road bringing kids out for a tour at Kingfisher. So that speaks back to one of those challenges that Richard was saying is, People are often brought up in this area of, oh, it's a great place to live, but there's no jobs, right? So when we were able to link that back and have the kids go on site, have a tour of one of our largest boat builders in, in, in the Okanagan and, 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 uh, and have that experience, they go, wow, there is some opportunities here that I don't have to leave the oil fields. I can, I can do those things here. Yeah, great example. Great. Thank you, you guys. Hope that uh, helps. I have a question for you, and then we'll move on to our next speaker. Um, what kind of metrics or do you do you, what kind of indicators do you use or look at to see if you're moving the needle? <laughs> you know, it's a great question and, and uh I, I think a lot about this, but the, the fundamental for me comes down to engagement. So if nobody shows up, you're probably not doing it right. <laughs> um if Everybody consistently shows up. And again, we've been at this for two years. We've had consistently that room has been full. And, and, and it's not the typical room where you have a lot of, you know, public sector folks yeah. sitting there talking to each other. There are more private sector people than there are public sector people in the room. That, to me, the, is the important metric because they're taking their valuable time and they're they're demonstrating they're getting something from it. And I think we've got a lot to build on, right? We can track everything with the website that we've launched. So we've started doing that as well. But I see us going likely to what where, and I think Jennifer did it at the BCA EDA conference, did a fantastic job on their Start Here Okanagan project that they've worked with. They've went another step further. They've started posting jobs. Uh, they've started getting the uh, employee side that is looking for opportunities. So then, then you're getting some real connections that you can have that metric side to say, actually, yeah. you know what? We started matching these employers and employees. I think that's that's where we want to go long term. That's, that's where we want to go next conversation. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say long term. Short term. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, you guys. That was uh, a really useful presentation. I'm going to just take back the controls here so I can introduce our next speaker. Uh, and I'm glad to see that Devin got his webcam working again after I turned it off on him <laughs> using my organizer powers. So uh, the next presentation we're going to have is with Devin Greenwell from the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Training. Uh, and he's going to show us and share with us information about the Find Your Fit Tour, uh, which is one of those uh, things that communities can use as a tool to it's a, it's a workforce development tool um, that has about as much information. And Davin can introduce himself a little bit more. I'm just going to send the screen controls over to Davin. Coming your way. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Okay. So I am actually going to fire up my PowerPoint here. Um, can you still see me over there? I can see you. Yeah. And we see your presentation. You can see me. Yay. Okay, awesome. So uh, like Sue mentioned, uh, my name is Davin Greenwell. I'm the manager of client engagement uh, at the Ministry of Advanced Education, Skills and Training. Um, and my uh, files that I'm responsible for include WorkBC, um, Welcome BC, and I'm also the ministry lead on WorkBC's Find Your Fit Youth Tour. I work in the workforce innovation and division responsible for skills training and fitting all of that on a business card is challenging. So I usually just tell people I, I work on a really cool project that goes across the, the province and uh, helps youth discover the jobs of tomorrow. That's it uh, condensed. But how do we do that and why do we do it? Um, so. In this division I work in, we actually are in the same branch as the province's chief economist who works on the labor market outlook, um, the 10 year projections of jobs and demand, and that's an aggregate of, uh, of stats can data, projections, industry needs, and uh, emerging trends. 
uh, including automation and that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, it's, it's really amazing data, uh, but it's useless unless people have access to it and have access to it and can understand it. Um, and, and that's true about any data. So our mission is, well, how do we make this accessible? How do we engage people with it? So that in the context of workforce development, people are looking at careers and understanding what kind of opportunities they are and accessing education and training so that their skills and knowledge development and their abilities development map out to um, the reality of what workforce development requires in the future. So uh, the first piece I wanna get to here is our website, workbc.ca. Uh, it was created with one key mission in mind, which is to be the provincial government's access point to the world of work in BC. Um, and it, it's, there's, there's many aspects to how we do that. One of uh, the ways we do that is uh, we share labor market information. We have the labor market outlook, which we just mentioned, that's on our website. Uh, high demand occupations. Uh, we have a career toolkit, a uh, number of different things, including 500 different career profiles with uh, detailed uh, information, including um, average salary, uh, job openings, links to actual job openings on our website through the WorkBC job board. Uh, and one of the really interesting things um, on the career toolkit is career trek, which are Daniel life five minute videos of uh, what it's like to do different jobs and they're all shot here in BC uh, and these are real British Columbians doing different jobs and it's a it's a way to uh, gain interest or, or garner interest in different occupations and raise awareness of you know what what does the Millerite do uh, what's the day in the life of uh, an accountant uh, what do they get out of the job why why do they do it um, and so that that links to um, job postings, uh, it links to infographics, and it helps people understand what skills and qualifications are required. Uh, and um, one more note on the WorkBC job board, there's also something called the Community Jobs API, which is uh, an app application programming interface, which essentially allows anyone with a, a website and a uh, job board to pipe the work BC jobs um, that are based in their community to their community job board. So that's, that's a useful thing and you can find that on our website. I won't get too much into that right now because it's pretty technical, but it's definitely uh, a very useful thing to have access to. So our topic is uh, workforce development and uh, it's helpful to go with a, a, a definition that we can all share and understand. Um, and I, I'm speaking to the experts already, but um, it's important to, to know why we do what we do. Um, and so we're looking at assisting youth and adults in acquiring knowledge and developing skills uh, beyond the basic education program. Uh, so they can enter the workforce in, in a way that maps out to what industry uh, is, is looking for and uh, that helps people if they know what their options are find meaningful work in, in areas that uh, will be gainful to not just them but also the industry um, and this is important in the context of a changing economy we all know that uh, technology changes things um, but there's a number of other factors that uh, also will change the economy so it's it's not a set it and forget it kind of thing. It's an ongoing thing and it's, it's a thing that, um, you know, we all need to keep our eyes on. So what is Find Your Fit? Uh, we call it experiential learning. It's uh, hands-on hands activities from different parts of the economy. Uh, we have a number of different activity stations and they're paired with labor market information. Uh, some of the activity stations appear to be games. Uh, however, all of the different activities are uh, mapped out to different uh, occupations and the skills required to participate in one of these uh, activity stations map out to those occupation groups as well. So uh, somebody finds they're good at something, they can explore uh, more labor market information. 
This was launched in uh, May 2014 and has become an integral part of our WorkBC outreach programming. So what kind of activities are there and what kind of uh, occupations are people looking at in this experience? So we have a list here, I won't read them all. Uh, you can see there's a number from a, a different from different areas of the economy, different industries. Uh, and we what we do is we regionalize this. So in areas where there are more jobs in demand in a certain uh, sector, we regionalize it to uh, um, that area. Uh, and we have a, a, a list of regionalized uh, jobs in demand that we get from our, our labor market information office. So it's a, uh, we're using data for this for, to make sure that we're uh, aligned with the regions. Um, so there's two types. There's activity stations. Those are the hands-on ones uh, where students, youth, any participant really can get a, a, a hands-on experience and see what it's actually like to do some of these um, occupations. Uh, they, they're not 100% uh, what it would be like to do you know, be like to do that job, but it, it's, uh, some of them are simulations and some of them are exercises that put you in the frame of mind of somebody that would do that job. Uh, it's a big difference to just hear a job title and see information on the screen it's, uh, versus actually going through um, and using those skills yourself and seeing, you know, do I like to do, use these skills? Am I good at this? I might be good at something I never even considered before, never even heard of. Um, something we hear about a lot from parents and teachers and students, well, mostly parents and teachers, uh, principals and so on, and um, uh, people in the community is, I wish we had this when we were in high school. Um, it would have made a big difference. And, and I feel the same way. We didn't have this. We had like a quiz told me I could be a bus driver. I probably still could. So what kind of activation types do we have? How do we actually do this? So our full activation for Find Your Fit is about 15 to 16 different stations. It's enough to fill an entire gymnasium. Uh, it's giant. Um, it takes about four hours to set up and take down. We have a semi-trailer truck full of these different stations. Um, and so because of that, it requires quite a bit of planning in advance with either the school or the community space. Uh, and we have to negotiate around, you know, if there's a volleyball practice the night before, they need the gym. So that's not a good day, that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, but once it's set up, it's it's a full experience. And you'll see in the video, we're, we're gonna show in a couple of minutes here, uh, what that means. Um, our Find Your Fit booth activation usually shows up at community events where there's less space. It's typically two 10 by 10 booths with the middle stanchion removed. We have about three to five um, stations in that smaller space. The interactions are a bit faster because there's less to go through. Uh, but we, we try to make sure that those stations are relevant to the region or community that we're setting up in. Um, and I say fit faster interactions. Um, the full activation for Find Your Fit is typically a 45 minute interaction for each individual. Um, and that can include uh, discussion with some of our youth outreach workers that are there at each of the stations and can talk to the participants more about, you know, this occupation, they find they're good at this occupation uh, and the skills that it requires. Um, what does it mean to actually go to school for that or to a training institution? Uh, and how long will that be? And what is the labor market outlook for that particular job? Will there be jobs when I graduate? It's a common question, but these conversations are happening within those 45 minutes. Uh, and the more stations that um, participants can go through, the more they can have an understanding of uh, what skills are in demand. Um, and, and what knowledge and what qualifications. The other activation we do is relatively new and uh, our friends in Vernon know about this. It's called Career Education Day. Uh, we've had a few of them. 
uh, and they're they're pretty new. We have about seven to eight of the uh, interactive stations, um, and the other half of the gymnasium is or the community center is is set up for three types of partner booths and. This, these ones are meant for um, participants to be, a, I, I suppose, a bit more mature in their career development and skills development conversation. So this one's usually meant for grades 10 to 12, as opposed to the Find Your Fit uh, regular tour, which is meant for grades 5 through 10. Career Education Day uh, brings career, uh, sorry, um, education partners, uh, industry partners, as well as support organizations and by education partner um, i mean higher education including universities colleges local training institutions polytechnics um, and for industry we're talking about local businesses um, so that students can be face to face with local employers and get a concrete understanding of what it is that businesses and uh, organizations who are hiring in general are looking for and how to close that gap for skills and qualifications and what I mean by support organizations um, so local entrepreneurship organizations if students are looking at starting their own business they need to know what's available to them uh, work BC ITA uh, the industry training authority go to HR um, and what we what our goal here is is if students are getting a bit further into this space of looking at developing a career, how can they actually meet some people that will help them get there? And, and we're really aiming to demystify it. Um, not all students get this experience. I know I didn't when I was in high school. Uh, and we wanna provide something for them that makes it not not necessarily easier but more familiar and they know how to navigate it better and they have they can actually start making some of those connections i think the face-to-face -face makes a big difference so who participates uh, like i mentioned in the previous slide for find your fit it's designed and developed for students grades five through ten uh, and that has to do with uh, the way we write some of the copy uh, on the materials it's also meant for how we design the activity so it's not too advanced, but it's advanced enough that it actually is relevant. For career education days, where we have the partners, it's students grades 10 through 12, and um, that is because of the type of conversations that are happening there. They're, they're ready for a bit more there. Uh, and a few metrics here. So uh, since May 2014, um, here's the number of interactions, direct interactions, um, not just people walking by, but direct interactions and conversations that we've had. Uh, about 210,000 youth have interacted with us, um, 63,000 and six adults. So it's not just for kids. This is labor market information. This is career development. This is about, uh, it can be about career transition for a more mature worker. Uh, and quite often parents will come along with their kids as well. Uh, we do evening sessions that are open to the public uh, and parents will come along with their kids or kids will drag their parents back to it out of interest. So that's a 273,000 total interactions since uh, May, 2014. So we're really focused on getting out there. Actually, where have we been? Um, I can't look at this list without getting a certain commercial jingle stuck in my head because we've been everywhere. Um, in BC, we've almost reached all school districts. That's our goal for this year. Um, 115 communities, 313 activations. Uh, and uh, we're really proud of that. Um, the map on your right shows you uh, last year's um, map in terms of where we got to. Uh, and right now we're planning uh, for September through next March.
So what's the outcome? Well, you hear about big data all the time. Um, and we're in the information age firmly. Uh, so the question is, how do you put big data in the hands of some of the most important decision makers when it comes to the workforce development, which are youth, earlier? Uh, and the reason why we have packaged up uh, labor market information in this way is precisely to pique interest with the younger decision makers about how they're going to get qualified, uh, where they're going to go to school, where they want to live and work and play. Um, so when we connect students and youth and people who are looking for that next step uh, with the next 10 years of uh, labor projections, jobs in demand, uh, they have they have a much better understanding about you know how they can connect what they love to do with what's in demand, um, and I think that's a profoundly powerful thing to do. Why would we wait uh, until later to share this information, or why wouldn't we package it in a way that's accessible earlier so better decisions could be made earlier and fill some of these gaps that. Uh, industry and business and organizations are telling us exist and this is reflected in the data as well as as um, mentioned earlier so we connect them uh, once they they know what they want to do uh, we connect them with education planners so they can see what schools and institutions offer specific programs locally uh, for what they want to do uh, and the education planners great website um, that has every uh, post-secondary institution in BC's programs and once uh, a, a participant is zeroed in on an occupation we bring up our work BC career profile it links to uh, a, a, a specialized link on education planner that shows all the programs in BC that relate to that occupation and then they can they can start that conversation at career education day sometimes this means that uh, a student will come in not knowing what they want to do, finding something they really like, talking to somebody that does it for a living, and the educational institution is in the same room and they register on the same day. This is, uh, this is fast moving stuff. Um, so we're really proud of when that kind of stuff happens. Um, and I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's truly meaningful. Where can you find out more? Visit workbc.ca slash findyourfit. And we've got a photo gallery up there. Uh, we have a calendar of upcoming events. You can request a tour stop for your community. And uh, we've also got a few uh, different things, uh, including teacher resources, that kind of thing, um, for pre and post visit uh, learnings. Um, but it's, it's good to know where it's going already. Uh, our calendar of, of events is uh, is up to date for the summer, and it will show you where we're going in terms of community events. Uh, some of the the full activations will start in September and October, and it'll go straight through until March. Oh, and why don't I show you a video of what it looks like in the community? Hey, Devin, I'm going to try uh, showing it from my screen to see if it works better. Okay. I think it may need an uh, organizer to share it. Uh, okay. And, uh, uh, well, I haven't run into this problem before. I changed computers. It worked yesterday on my other computer. <laughs> so I, I guess we're not going to get it because I, I actually do not know what that error message means unfortunately okay it's probably some kind of security thing so unfortunately we can't do that but i know that if uh if people are wanting to see the video uh you've got a pretty good it's easily googled right it's it's on the website i just mentioned workbc.ca slash find your fit so just click on about and you'll see it okay great well apologies yeah. that and then i have one last slide 
Oh, okay. Well, let me just give you the slide control back then. Here we go. It's a really important one. Let me guess. Is how to reach you? Here it is. Can you oh, see it? Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope that was useful. Yeah, I think it was. I'm going to open it up for uh, questions uh, from our audience as well. Uh, now, I thought I had a question. Of course, it has disappeared from my mind for the time being. Um, so we, I, I think my question was going to be, um, how, how can people get on your tour if they want to uh, have you come? And we covered that. You can request it through the website. Um, I'm also going to bring back um, Kevin and Richard and see if they want to participate. If anyone has questions for either of our uh, speakers today or wants to ask any workforce development question, um, you can put up your hand or type a question into our question box. Um, while I wait for people to do that, I actually have one more poll that I want to ask people to participate in. Uh, and just to get an idea of uh, what kind of worker workforce development activities different communities have underway. Uh, so if you've uh, been nibbling on your sentiments, you're checking your email, come on back to the, your screen. Uh, there's a question for you to answer. Uh, do you have any of these development activities underway? Uh, industry education partnerships, uh, pre-employment training programs, on-the-job training programs, worker attraction or retention, uh, and other stuff not mentioned here. If you've got other stuff going on and you want to type it into the questions for staff, I can collect those up as well. It gives us a, an idea of what different communities have underway. I was just doing a scan of our BC Ideas Exchange uh, story collection and noticing that uh, we actually have quite a few different workforce development initiatives um, kind of have to seek through our story collection. I'm going to work on, on building another uh, index so that it's easier to find these. But uh, you may, in fact, have things that you don't know fall under the, the title of workforce development, but they really are. Um, so we're also going to uh, later this fall, we will have a couple more uh, BC Ideas Exchange webinars and we're going to be sharing um, the story of the uh, BC Film, BC TV and Film Crew Training Program from North Island College uh, later this year. So we've got 75% voter turnout, which I think is pretty fabulous. Thank you very much, everyone, for participating. I'm just going to share the results here so we can see. Um, it's interesting, not everyone is doing everything, but uh, someone somewhere is doing each of these. So um, we've got a, a pretty interesting range of things uh, under the, the heading of workforce development initiatives. Thank you very much, everyone, for taking part in the poll. Um, I haven't got any more questions coming in right now. So uh, rather than uh, carry on, oh, I'm going to change the presenter back to me. Here we go. So with an absence of other uh, questions coming in, oh, there we go. Uh, we have an opportunity for discussion, but I think probably people are ready uh, to go back to their lives now that lunch hour is over. Um, I'm going to thank everyone for participating tonight. Thank you, uh, Richard and Kevin and Vernon. Uh, your webcam's turned off, but I know you're still there. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Here our show today. Um, I'm just going to highlight, um, we will, I'm just working on uh, plans to do one more webinar in the summertime. Um, I can't announce the date right now, but it is going to be very exciting for those smaller communities who are looking for funding. There's a big hint drop for you. Uh, so stay uh -huh. tuned uh, for that. It will be coming up sometime in the next few weeks, actually. We're going to try and get it rolling as fast as we can before a certain deadline at the end of July. There's another big hint for you what it might be about. Um, 
the the Tech Dev 101 series will be continuing in September and October. There's the, the links to register for them if you want to. I'm in the middle of planning the fall winter 2018 2019 webinar schedule. So if you have something specific that you'd like to see, you know a great story that we should highlight, uh, you have a burning desire to see a topic that we've done in a past webinar revisited and updated, uh, please email me. Um, it's really easy economic development at gov.bc.ca. So over the next Two or three weeks, I'm going to be establishing what the schedule is through to December. Um, there's always room to throw an extra party. Uh, everyone likes a good webinar, so we will always make room if there's more topics that come up. Um, I'll, I'll hint we've got stuff coming on social enterprise um, and cooperatives probably. We're also going to be having a session on connectivity for smaller communities, and I know that's been one that's in demand. And I'm going to be working on sessions that talk about First Nations and municipal collaborations and understanding the First Nations land use and financial management acts and how to build good partnerships. Um, so, uh, oh, that's what I'm talking about. There's the slide to go with it. So if you'd like to be a speaker or you have specific requests, send me an email. Um, and if you want to make sure that you're getting those invitations, um, write down this short uh, URL and make sure that you add yourself to our invitation list. Um, this is how we send out the, the notices, so get on the list. Um, there will be a feedback survey coming out about this webinar. Uh, the recording of the webinar will be posted in about a week to our website. Um, another thing that will be happening this summer is I'm going to be sending out a webinar survey sort of for the whole how we've done this spring since I started. And I want to find out things about what do you think about the topics, um, about the platform, about the time of day that we do it. And so the more feedback I get on that, the happier I can make you as our webinar listeners. Um, yeah. That is all she wrote, folks. Thank you very much also to Davin uh, and Kevin and Richard for, for joining us today on the webinar. And uh, I'll see you in a, see all of you fine folks in the community in a couple of weeks when we have our next one. And happy summer. Thanks for having us. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.